Hi there, I'm Mike Fields and I live here in Tauranga, in the beautiful Bay of Plenty in New Zealand. As a vegan, I've often wondered about the raw food lifestyle. I've even tried some of the food. I've also seen the experiment where you take a really overweight person on the standard diet of burgers and fries and soft drink and alcohol and you put them on a raw diet. They lose all this weight and their health improves. I know myself from having slowly transitioned from a similar sort of lifestyle that even if they were still eating meat and having cooked vegetables but did a bit of exercise, they could still really improve their health. Part of my hesitation in trying the raw food lifestyle has been that I'm a vegan that's already lost a lot of weight and really improved my health. In fact, I've lost about 30 centimetres off my belly, or about 12 inches. So, as a skinny vegan, the real question is, would there be any difference? Here we are, it's day four, and first thing in the morning, and I feel pretty terrible. I think I've got the day four detox starting to kick in. When you know what you're doing, and it clicks, it becomes easy, and the results show for themselves. The reality is, when you go into the supermarket, the moment you've gone past the fresh produce department, you're in the non-food section of the store. From being with Dr. Ann Wigmore for so long and studying with her, I learned that raw foods have within them the ability to heal. I'm doing this so I'm supposed to feel more energy. I just got this incredible clarity that I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> Instead, I just want to sleep. I mean, it really is a form of torture that we're inflicting on these animals. And when I realized that, I had to ask myself, well, do we have any right to be drinking their milk? Many times I was told I'd be on drugs for the rest of my life. People often tease me that, you know, I only eat rabbit food and I always respond that actually I eat quite a lot of gorilla food and whale food and sometimes, you know, horse food and elephant food is a particular favourite of mine. Well, within a few weeks, I uh, noticed the sex drive came back which had disappeared through the chemotherapy and also the arthritic pains out of my body disappeared, which the oncologist told me which was normal for a man of my age. Our five-year-old son, who just turned home yesterday, he has assimilated all the reasons so he won't eat anything, any animal product, because he doesn't want to hurt the animals, and also because he doesn't think it's healthy. The reality is we don't really inherit the disease, we inherit the lifestyle. The mothers of his friends call me and complain. <laughs> you five-year-old is trying to get our family to become vegan, can you please stop him? <laughs> yeah, it's just interesting because often it's your brain that is playing tricks on you. You know, like with cravings, for example, it's more your memories those foods that actually suck you in. I just want a nice big coffee. I just feel like that'll pep me up. Although I know it won't. And sometimes that's why it's actually really good to sometimes maybe even give in and, and go to this craving because then you realize, wow, that is actually so disappointing. That when you have it, it's it doesn't match up to the memory of where you put the food on, you know? The majority of people never question what they eat. And so you start saying you're doing something about it. Most people don't want to change. They want to keep eating the same things, the same lifestyles, being the same old person, that's fine. But for me, that is not the case. I've changed. I came to understand that the raw vegan lifestyle was the way for me to, to do something about my health. You gotta have the raw food, folks! The raw stuff, you know. Crunch, crunch, crunch.